Atal Bhujal Yojana, the flagship groundwater management scheme, was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, on 25th December 2019. The following presentation gives an overview of the program and briefly explains the guidelines, the institutional structure, processes, inclusions and exclusions which will be used for implementing the program in the selected states. The importance of groundwater in India cannot be undermined. Groundwater fulfills the drinking water requirements of nearly 85% and 50% of the rural and urban Indian population respectively. 65% of the total irrigated area utilizes groundwater, thus in turn helping in increasing our food and agricultural output. It also caters to the water needs of the industrial sector in India. However, this intensive and unregulated extraction and utilization of groundwater has led to a sharp and severe decline in the groundwater levels. To tackle this issue, the Government of India has made several attempts at groundwater management in different parts of the country. Atal Bhujal Yojana is one such consolidated attempt from the central government that aims at improving the management of groundwater resources in selected water stressed areas in the seven states of Gujarat, Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh through community led sustainable groundwater management practices. It is the first scheme of its kind that involves enactment of community-based planning, monitoring, sharing and use of groundwater data and practices to demystify the complex science of groundwater management. The scheme will be implemented over a period of five years from 2020 to 2025 in designated water stressed areas of 8,350 gram panchayats located in 78 districts of these seven states. The 6,000 crore scheme will receive 50% funds from the World Bank and the other 50% from the Government of India. The program is unique in that it calls for community led sustainable groundwater management achieved through identification of water stressed areas, executing possible demand and supply side interventions and converging with other ongoing and new central and state government schemes. Atal Bhujal Yojana will be financed under a new lending instrument P4R, Program for Results, wherein the World Bank will disburse funds to the Government of India only on attainment of some pre-agreed results. Primarily, costs incurred in implementing this scheme are divided into two components, the institutional strengthening and capacity building component focuses on expenditure required for training and capacity building of stakeholders with the objective of improving groundwater governance at all levels. The incentive component aims at incentivizing states for taking up measures necessary for ensuring the long-term sustainability of groundwater resources achieved via community participation and convergence of the existing central and state government schemes. This scheme incorporates the challenge method, wherein those states rising up to the challenge of selecting appropriate sites, encouraging use of technology and innovation, ensuring community participation, speedy implementation, transparency and accountability will be duly incentivized with the timely dispersal of funds. Of the total scheme outlay of 6,000 crores, a major portion of 4,600 crores is reserved 
for the incentive component, while the remaining amount of 1,400 crores is earmarked for the institutional strengthening and capacity building component. The entire World Bank funding of 3,000 crores is directed towards the incentive component. On the other hand, the Government of India will contribute 1,400 crores and 1,600 crores to the institutional strengthening component and the incentive component respectively. Disbursement linked indicators are those predetermined result indicators based on achievement of which funds will be released by the World Bank. Five DLIs have been stated in the guidelines for achievement of two key result areas mapped to the scheme's objective. The first result area of strengthening institutional framework and effective groundwater data monitoring envisages achievement of DLI-1, public disclosure of groundwater information and reports, DLI-2, preparation of community-led water security plans, and DLI-5, improvement in the rate of decline of groundwater levels. The second result area of improved planning and implementation of groundwater interventions necessitates attainment of DLI-3, public financing of approved water security plans through convergence of new and ongoing schemes, and DLI-4, adoption of practices for efficient water use. Maximum funds up to 40% are set aside for implementation of DLI-4, that is adopting efficient water use practices. Under DLI-1, hydrologic data will be collected and disseminated at the Gram Panchayat level. Data from all participating Gram Panchayats in a block will be collected, compiled, collated and brought out as a report at the block level. Public disclosure of data at the block level will lead to achievement of this DLI. Activities under DLI-2 involve bottom-up planning of groundwater interventions through the preparation and updating of water budget and water security plans that have been formulated by the community. Participation of women in the planning process is a prerequisite for attaining this DLI. DLI-3 creates incentive to shift public financing on groundwater to priority measures identified through the bottom-up groundwater planning process. It will help align the implementation of various government programs. DLI-4 incentivizes the implementation of groundwater management measures included in the water security plans. This DLI will incentivize demand-side measures that reduce water consumption including the introduction of water-saving technology. Under DLI-5, a block is verified to have achieved the DLI if there is an improvement in the declining trend of groundwater levels corrected for rainfall in at least 50% of the observation wells in a given block as compared to the baseline. Not all possible interventions qualify for implementation under Atal Bhujal Yojana. Large-scale interventions like construction of major dams and irrigation projects, recharge using industrial wastewater are prohibited under the scheme. At the village level, the possible demand-side interventions the community can undertake are micro-irrigation via drip or sprinkler, recycling of water, laying underground pipelines, crop diversification, feeder separation for irrigation power supply, and pressurized irrigation. The supply-side measures aimed at obstructing the flow of water and increasing water seepage into the ground involve constructing small check dams, percolation ponds, contour bunds, farm ponds, recharge wells, vented dams, gully plugs, and doing drainage line treatment. To ensure long-term sustainability of this scarce resource, 
the government of india lays more emphasis on implementing demand side management measures accompanied by behavioral change in the community